Although we can say that the blue whales have been around for a long time, if we go back in time, we will find that man was evolving alongside us, forming his shape. Many shapes were forming on Earth. Down through the etheric spheres, these shapes were being molded and controlled. But many shapes are not appreciated. For instance, the large dinosaurs are accused of having puny minds and of having limbs which could not move properly. But maybe theirs was a shape into which nature had to grow and then evolve out of. We do not realize that they had a great sensitivity in the tail and the feet. They also had the ability to sense changes in the weather and the atmosphere. Many of the gifts that animals possess are not possessed by human beings, so we must not look at the invisible world and think of it as a paler shade of humanity. The invisible world is strewn with ideas and thoughts that never came into being. Different shapes and patterns of animals and flowers came into being and then disappeared altogether. But they are in the Akashic records. As life emerged from the sea, the latter had a great potential for releasing different forms and shapes that dwelt within it and which were a part of the creativity of what was going to come into being. So you will find that if you go too deeply into the reality of the consciousness of the sea, you will link up with various kinds of creative forms, shapes, sizes and things which were perhaps thought about when the invisible was thinking of ways in which it could manifest. The invisible was very pliable at one time, and not as condensed as it now is. Shapes begin to form before the skin mechanism, the tangible world, is ready. We are always very much behind. In the invisible, the higher forms of man and animal are formed already, and we are growing into them. We are continually growing into things, and in so doing we discard certain things. You should therefore be careful, because if you go into the consciousness of the sea and you are not led by an animal, you must not think all the material you see immediately viable, and you must differentiate between things that were discarded and things that were not. As far as those images were concerned, they dissolved, and the future images of what will be in the water are already growing in the water ethers. On another level of consciousness, the water has all the memories of everything that was thought about as it was coming into consciousness. Therefore, there are in the sea things that are not necessary, and things that should not be thought about, or brought forward. If people go into the consciousness of the sea, taking shapes and forms and putting these shapes into the consciousness, wrong shapes and forms may come into the consciousness, and this is not healthy for many reasons. So I think it is right that we no longer think of that area of the sea consciousness. Nowadays, we try to preserve all kinds of specimens and try to keep them breathing long after the energy patterns in that particular animal have started to withdraw. There is an organization which is beyond this concept which you perhaps have of the world, which is molding those shapes. And when an animal is ending its span of evolution, it does not disappear. It goes into another shape and form. Perhaps by holding on to it, by desperately not letting it go, we are actually stopping the dissolving of evolutionary patterns that are fading out. I think a lot of people do it so that their children can inherit something, so that they can see what things were like. Hopefully, 
The children of the future will be able to see all those things in their consciousness, travel through space and time, be able to look at different epochs in history and at different animals, and be able to see things so clearly that they will no longer need replicas.